Carmela, this may seem obvious, but Christmas and the holidays is a time of traditions. That's right. Now, what is one of your favorite holiday traditions? Mm, hands down, my favorite Christmas tradition is the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Oh, well, how mm-hmm. about we talk about that special celebration and some wines we should pair with the delicious seafood? Oh, it sounds awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. I don't, I oh, just, wow. I mean, I just hit that. Okay, a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast. In each episode, we learn about, and we taste, and we review three wines that are reasonably priced, that means under $20, and should be easy for you to find, and our goal is to have some fun, to learn about some new wines, and talk about wines in a way that regular people like us can understand. Perfect. Yeah, and we are proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine, who call us fun, irreverent, chatty, and entertaining. Wow. Okay. Wow, that was a very emphatic... <laughs> wow. wow. That was... Okay, on Woo! with it. Okay, so many of you out there in listening land know that Carmela and I are both Italian-American, mm-hmm. and both of our grandparents and or great-grandparents on both sides of our families were immigrants to the United States from different parts of southern Italy. That's right. And we know that many people out there in listening land, you have family traditions around the holidays that are passed down from generation to generation, whether that's Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Christmas or whatever it is you choose to celebrate. And those traditions are what makes the holidays spatial. Spatial? Special. So special. Yeah, exactly. Really, truly. Okay. Now, in your family, Carmela, you have a tradition that we both love, and it's a widely celebrated tradition for many Italian-American families, and it's called... The Feast of the Seven Fishes. That's right. And it takes place every... Christmas Eve. That's right. And so this is a big party that we help, we hold, or we don't hold it, either at your parents' house or your Uncle Frank and Aunt Deanne's house. And there's tons of food, and there's tons of wine, and there's tons of people, and there's tons, tons of, of Italian fun. streets. And generally, there is not a speck of meat. That's right. We don't do meat on no Christmas meat. Eve. Nope. Nope. And so for this episode, and for those of you out there in listening land, we're going to talk about what this awesome celebration is. And of course, we're going to spend some time talking about wines that we think are great fits for this amazing celebration. Wow, this is so fun. Now, I have a confession to make, too. Not a confession. Just a reality check. Okay. Okay? On my mom's side of the family, Mm -hmm. I do remember having fish on Christmas Eve. And that was a tradition. But it wasn't your favorite. And I also kind of... Okay. Okay, make Go your ahead. confession. Uh, no, and it was also a much more subdued and, and humble meal. But For what sure. were you going to say? And I was just going to say, at that point in your life, you were not very big on fish. And so your mom no. probably made you an egg. Or I just ate something different, whatever. Oh. But um, in, in the, our big meal was Christmas Day. That was kind of our ah, big thing was Christmas mm-hmm. Day. And I also seem to recall that the Christmas Eve tradition in our side of the family was usually a meal of bacala in tomato sauce. Which is fish. Which bacala is, fish. is a type of fish. Now, for those of you not d- yeah. very good. Well, that's what I was going to say. So those of you out there in listening land who don't know what bacala is, let me tell you. Let okay. me tell you what it is. It is a traditional Italian salted cod, and it's used in a variety of ways, none of which I personally like very much. And there is a famous Italian song right. that says bacala in it. Do you know what it is? What I, the song is? Did. We sang what's, it for what's the song my called? great-grandfather. What? I don't know. It's, it's called Che La Luna. Oh, oh Che La Luna. Na, 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 get, da, da, no, that's how we know. Da, da. And then, oh, mama, mama pesce frita bacala. No, it's a wrong. Well, I mean, that's it's a wrong. <laughs> you said it's a wrong. What? No, you were on. The tune was different. Well, I got the right tune. You got the right. You Maybe sing it then. The you sing one? it. You sing it. Oh, mama pesce frita bacala. You can do it that way. <laughs> Whatever. How, I don't well, the, here's the funny thing. Like most Italian, this is perfect because most Italian <laughs> traditions, singer. like a lot of things that come from the old country, in different families, different regions, the words right. a little different, the songs true, a little different. True. This is a little different. Like there's the famous um, Louis Prima version that where it's like zuppa zuppa bacala or something crazy. Right. Like he it's does little, something totally different. different. And yeah, all exactly. Goes just- we scowl when we hear that. We're like, oh, my. he must be from the north. But the problem is, like, <laughs> you could be from a village like t- 20 miles away and it'd be totally different. Yeah. And then they'd be insisting 
like theirs is right and yours is wrong. Right. That's no, there's the always a battle. Yeah. Your our way is always the right way. Yeah, like exactly. Whatever your way is, it's the right way. That's why when I first like we first started doing or I started doing this feast of the seven fishes with you, I was like, what the hell is this? Because we didn't do it. So right. well, in my mom's family, and I think this is true of a lot of Italian Americans, or in my case. My mom's family, Italian Canadians, who came from the really southern province of Calabria. One thing is, pretty much any food could be combined with tomato sauce. True. So it wasn't just bacala. It's like it's not just so spaghetti you had, and meatballs. You had meatballs. tomato sauce with your bacala. Oh, that's what I yes. Yeah, so yeah, I, mean, I heard the, you say that, but yeah. I wonder. I know you said that was one of the ways it was prepared. But well, if you give me a minute, I'll talk okay, about go, it. Okay, go. Okay, so go. like in my mom's family, tomato sauce with anything. Like we had peas and tomato sauce. Right. That oh was just the thing God. we did. That was Thanksgiving. Yeah, and then my mom would make this thing that we called. I don't know what it was. But we called that meat in the pan, and basically huh. it was old roast beef that she tried to revive in a tomato sauce in a pan over the stove. Oh my! So God. You just it was put, probably delicious. It was uh, not that good, no? but it's fine. So on Christmas Eve, it was bacala or the salted cod that my aunt Agatha made, which was rinsed. You had to rinse it because it's all salted, so you right. have to rinse it, which right. is just weird. Did she get by it, then salt it herself? Or no, did no, it come no, salted? no, no, no. She went to she went to Croce's. She went oh, to PFI. Right, right. Got the salted cod from from John Croce, and then brought it home, and it was wow, like wow. salted, so you didn't have to like it was already it wasn't preserved. Like you were brining it yourself, like no, a turkey. no, no, no. Just, okay. But you had to rinse it because if you don't, it's all salted, right? And right. then she would drop it into a pot of tomato sauce, and it would simmer all day, and they would eat that before heading to Midnight Mass. My God. Did yeah. you go to Midnight Mass? Yeah. I mean, that was just kind of the thing. I don't remember oh. really until I was, ironically, a little older going to Children's Mass. But like, yeah, we would some... Huh. And my brothers would be like altar boys at Christmas Eve oh, Mass and all that kind goodness. of stuff. So, okay. So all I can remember about bacala, because I don't think I ever ate it, and because as you said, I wasn't much of a fish eater at the time or seafood either, is that it smelled horrible. Oh. No. It smelled terrible. My gosh. That's and, but the so funny thing odd. is, I also remember my mom and my uncles, like everybody. Did they love it? Oh, they were crazy but about it. But did they love the like the tradition and idea behind it? Or do you think they actually loved the I, taste? I think it's one of those things that like you grow up with it right, and you, maybe. It's a nostalgic. Yeah. I feel like maybe if it's just, <laughs> that just doesn't sound very I good. Don't, well, it wasn't. I don't, I never tried it, but I don't think it was very good. It was kind of gross. Tried it. It kind of grossed never me out. never tried it. But they, they, they <laughs> loved it. They loved it. But in your family, you know, you have this Feast of the Seven Fishes. Mm-hmm. It's quite, quite a bit more elaborate. I don't ever think I've seen bacala there. No, we don't do bacala. And actually, if you look up the Feast of the Seven Fishes, Mm -hmm. bacala is not typically on the menu. Well, that seems odd because it is a very Italian thing. Yes. Bacala is a very Italian thing. Is it a Christmas? I don't think, I think it's just an Italian thing to have like salted cod. But I only knew it from the song. My great grandfather would sing that song. And And I I only knew it from, I thought it was a fish you put in tomato sauce, but evidently (laughs) that's not the only way you can eat it. But anyway, we're not here to talk about bacala. That's okay. No, no. I like to hear about about your Christmas I know, but mine's actually not that interesting. It's just kind of weird. Yours is fun. So we're going to talk about that. We're here to talk about that crazy, huge, amazing meal called the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So we'll talk about what it is in more detail. And we're going to taste and review three white wines that we think may be good pairings for this fun night. And by the way, each of the choices. Choices is one from Italy and two, probably not a super common choice for a lot of wine drinkers. So that'll be fun. Mm. And we're not going off the beaten path. All these wines are, you should be able to find and are under $20. Excellent. So what do you say? Should we do it? Let's do it. Well, first, Carmela, we have to do our shameless plug. That's right. So if you are finding that you are enjoying what you are hearing more than you thought you could ever enjoy anything in your life. Wow. In your life, we think it would be stupendo if you would subscribe to our People podcast. People might think it's stupid. No, stupendo is wonderful, stupendous, like stupendous. Yeah. And we would also be molto felice if you would leave us a nice rating Very and happy. review. That's right, and review on our website or on our podcast service, on your podcast service, so that people who are out there searching around will see our ratings and go, Maron. Oh my God! <laughs> no, that's no, actually that's, yeah, the that's Mother the, Mary, right, right. Madonna. I should check these guys out these guys these oh my guys. god okay so you can also follow us or reach oh, out to us on, on you can also follow us or reach out to us on instagram at the wine pair podcast or on counter social which is our twitter alternative of choice or you can contact us on our website at the wine pair podcast.com and as we do every week we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about the wine pair podcast and this week we want you to tell anyone who is of italian descent or wishes they were of right, italian which descent is- 
very common. Very common. Most people decide they are Italian. They just kind of say, say, I think yeah, I'm Italian. Yeah, I think I am too. You want to be Italian? Yeah. Okay, right, you're right. in. It's and we've a adopted bit. a lot of people. Right. In fact, if you give us a rating and review and you let us know, you can we'll come, adopt you. Yeah, You'll and be, you, wow. Well, you I don't come know. To, you First of all, to, you can come to Sunday dinner. Yeah. And then if then you pass you can that, decide. <laughs> if you pass that, then you might be able to come to Feast of the Seven Fishes. Oh, yes. Okay. So how about we talk about what this here Feast of the Seven Fishes is? What do I you think, think that's a great idea. Okay. So I did a little research on the interwebs and I started using chat GPT too, wow. which if you don't know what that is, it will change the world. Pretty soon you will never have to write anything ever again. But anyway, the Feast... Feast of the Seven Fishes, it probably originated in Italy in some form before it came here to the United States, but it is definitely associated with Italian Americans. Yes, like, absolutely. I don't think it's something that you like. If you went to Italy and they said, Hey, what are you doing for the Feast of the Seven Fishes? They probably look at you cross eyed. Right. Mostly no, it's because more, they, yeah, so they you think it's more Italian American. To- totally. Yeah, I think so too. When I, I actually was doing a little looking around too, and that's what I was seeing. Yeah. And, and I think it's very much... Well, I think that's interesting because my family who immigrated, yeah. they were the ones that, that brought it here, or at least they were the ones that started well, it. Here's kind so, of what I think I a little bit. What I think a little bit about it is like in Italy, a lot of the families were, you know, from Southern, Southern Italy and they didn't have a lot of money and they didn't have a lot of food. And I think part of it was like a celebration of like all the great things that have happened in America and becoming American and having more hmm. money. And all. So I think there's something about that too. Mm-hmm, but anyway, mm-hmm. the roots of and this is always on Christmas Eve. Feast of the Seven Fishes is always on Christmas Eve. Right. And the roots of it are religious. Right. And they are actually steeped in Catholicism. Yes. But I think sim- they're the symbols of Catholicism. But I don't know if you find it in any, like, I mean, you're not No, gonna, it's not in the Bible. No. It's not like Jesus had the Feast right, of the Seven the sim- Fishes. No. The, no. <laughs> or Moses. Well, maybe he did. Maybe he did. No, but. We didn't know about it. He yeah. wasn't Italian, by the way. No, Although he Italians wasn't. think he probably was. Yeah, but for sure. Anyway. Um, uh, first of all, do you know why the focus. Oh, what were you no, going to say? No, ask. Do you know why the focus is on fish, first of all? Um, the focus is on fish because, pro- probably because it, you were sacrificing exactly. meat. Exactly. Like meat was the big deal, right? Exactly. Like- so this is a very common thing for people who were raised, especially of Italian background, if you were raised Roman Catholic and in the tradition, it was very common that the evening before a major feast day was a meal that where we abstained from meat. Oh my right? gosh, give me a break. And you're right. This purpose was really supposed to be a sort of a penance. It was like you were right. giving up meat. Like that's a big deal. Yeah. But there's no suffering. So weird? There's no family, suffering. There's no, no suffering. which was such a, I mean, oh, I'm not a big meat eater, but I remember thinking like, this is, this is it. Like, eating fish was like the pinnacle when we were having fish dinners. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And the Feast of the Seven Fishes was like... A big deal. It's a huge deal. So I never felt it was a sacrifice. But that's... I always remember thinking... And it's not... Let let me tell you people out there in listening land, this is not a meal that is a sacrifice. The only thing you're going to sacrifice is like your comfort because you're going to be so stuffed that you can't even think anymore. for those... Who, who are don't? starving because they don't like fish. So now let's talk about that because there are some families that are militant about no meat. Right. Like you cannot have a speck Like my uncle. Of meat. Yes, exactly. But others are more loose, like your Aunt Lucia. And Aunt Lucia would often bring a little uh, crock pot again? of drunken weenies. Hey, oh my God. <laughs> Because most of her, well, not most, some of her family actually were the ones who didn't prefer yeah, exactly. fish. So, yes. And I'll say, when we were first married, I was like, oh, boy, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And now I'm like, I, now you're I don't right like everything. There. I don't like everything. So we'll talk about that in a minute, like some of the foods that are served. I don't like everything, but I like a lot of them. Yes. Now, why is seven fishes important? Well, seven is a, is a big number in the Bible yeah. or in the Catholic Church. Yeah. I so mean, what the, are some things that well, are associated like with seven? The... Um, Seven deadly sins. <laughs> yes, seven deadly sins. <laughs> That's the first one. The seven sacraments. Right, seven right? sacraments. And the Catholic Church is seven the sacraments. Earth, uh, the world was created in seven, seven days. days. You're right. And actually, uh, I read I read this on the uh, on the interwebs, but in the Bible, the 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 number seven is used over seven hundred times, which is kind of ironic. Oh wow! Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, according to Chat GPT, they think that it has to do with the seven sacraments, but we're not sure. But I will say that even though this is associated with Christmas Eve and and all that, it's not. It's not actually a religious, uh, it's not a religious moment, although a couple mm. things do happen. Usually somebody will say grace at some point, and then very often, at least when we're at your uncle's house, a priest will show up. Well, for sure, for years. In fact, we used to have mass in our house. Oh, that's right, with private, Father Small, right? Father Small. We yeah. had our private mass, because who wanted to take time to actually go to church yeah. and bring all the kids? And so we'd say, hey, how about you come? 
same mass. Yeah. And then you can stay for the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Yeah. And now what happened, and let me tell you, it's not a party until the priest shows up. But right. let me tell you, what would happen is there is a couple masses on Christmas Eve. There's like the children's mass, and then there's a break, and then they do midnight mass or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so usually in the break, some of the priests would be like, hey, I need a bite to eat and maybe a glass of wine. And so let's go over to, to the... the that pig That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Bonos, yeah. So now... The rules for what to serve on the Feast of the Seven Fishes are not hard and fast. No. So fish actually does not literally mean fish. It means seafood. Right. right? So it really could be right. any kind of seafood. And there usually are, well, there have to be at least seven dishes, but there can be more. Mm-hmm. And then I was reading on the interweb, some people take it to mean like seven. There has to be seven different types of seafood. Mm-hmm. And some people just say, no, it's just seven different dishes and you can use the same seafood over again if you want to like you could have three dishes with shrimp in it for Mm -hmm, instance mm -hmm. but um oh and also i'll say this it's pretty common that there are just waves of food waves of food right it's not like there's one table and and like everything's out all at once not it's not although there is a buffet later in the night by the way well yeah we shouldn't have spoiled that no i will well so what happens is So usually the dinner starts after the children's mass on Christmas Eve, which is, by the way, my least favorite mass in the history of the world. Uh, And then we go back to somebody's house, either your parents' house or your aunt and uncle's house. And then the waves of food happen and it leads to a large buffet. And again, we'll talk about it in a second. But what are the types of seafood dishes that your family usually serves? Name them. Name them. Okay. So we always start with oysters, raw oysters on the half shell. Okay. Um, then we'll do baked clams. That's two. Uh, then we'll do steamed mussels and clams. That's three. And then we'll do cracked crab. That's four. We'll do um, that grilled shrimp. That's five. We'll do probably like a smoked salmon. That's six. One more. And then we'll probably do calamari, some sort of fried yeah, calamari. Yeah, or a calamari salad. Or, like sal- a fr- or an octopus salad. Yeah. But it's almost all the yeah, seafood rather than fish. There isn't a ton. I mean, the smoked salmon, yes. But you're right. It's like actually there isn't like a bronzino that comes no, out or something. No, no. I mean, we may have a time, from time to time had something like that come out. But yeah. no. But the most is I mean, usually like a like smoked salmon. Sometimes we'll get a whole whole smoked salmon yeah like a big ass smoked like a salmon. whole piece yeah exactly i mean it's like actually the whole fish and then we'll smoke smoked. the salmon yes you know wow. okay anyway so and then we have a famous line that we use during the evening what it's is important. it what this is, is the line this is what actually is your not brother just like fiori. a saying this is like a ritual it's kind of a rule but a rule. your brother fiori right. i think came up with it but what is it's, it it's eat and fall back yeah so let me first of all let me tell you all of those of you out there in listening land it may be a word a phrase that you want to use at some time but here's picture this picture this this is how it works there's a good size table in the kitchen where the waves of seafood are just kind of coming out and being mm-hmm. served but while the table is pretty good size it's still not big enough for everyone because there's a right. lot of people True. and so there are a lot of people who want to eat and so because there are a lot of people the you will call out eat and fall back because it's like hey well, give somebody else a chance exactly come up for air yeah and some Take people get it back. yeah and some people get it and some people don't oh, and that was sort of like instead of being like excuse me and trying to be polite and getting a little you know ign- or no. irritated you yell it eat and fall back yeah. you finally, yell it out you yell it out we got to the yeah. point where it was like nobody if we <laughs> if you know the phrase say it point it at somebody That's make right. that person eat and fall back come That's up for right. air and yeah. here's the other thing if you snooze you lose Totally. Nobody's gonna say, "Hey, we've got the cra- crab coming." Except out now. for for the priest. <laughs> Except for the priest. Well, no, because usually the priests like they, they make come. a plate for True. him. Or whatever, That's what whatever. I mean. Like yeah. the, everybody's gonna. Oh, make sure you make a plate for the priest. Yeah. And yeah. then after that, after these waves, seven waves of seafood, mm. then we have the buffet dinner. Right, right. And the, in the buffet dinner, it, there has to be a pasta dish of some sort. Always. Like always. lasagna or pasta, pasta with, tomato with tomato sauce. sauce and, right. And then, right. Sometimes even a pesto, depending. Yeah. And then there's a number of salads. There may be a caprese salad. There's some bread. There's some fruit. There's fruit, some cheese. There's veggies, vegetables. Yeah. All that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Tons of food. It's a workout. Like you're seriously. And it's like, then. And then there's. The dessert. And, and, and I'll, I'll just say this. In our family, any normal like Sunday night dinner, there's at least three desserts. There are at least like a dozen or more desserts. Right, right. And don't forget, it is my Aunt Lucia's birthday. birthday that's so we right. always have a cake on that's Christmas right. Eve. Well, what are some of the famous desserts that your family makes? Well, it's mostly cookies, Italian cookies. Yeah. So yeah. my mom in particular, she would do like the traditional pinoli cookies. Mm-hmm. So like pinoli nuts or pine nuts. 
Um, she would do uh, angel turds. Angel turds or your angel aunt wings. Glow, your we aunt, do the pit cells. Yeah, your aunt glow does um, My daughter and I make a big platter with like, uh, you know, some traditional ones that are like ginger snaps and um, uh, Linzer, whatever, those Tart, little thumbprints. Yeah, yeah, then thumbprint we'll do biscotti, yeah. sometimes fudge. I mean, there's all kinds of, and then there's a cake. Yeah, and then there's a cake. And, and then, then there's my also brother like. Will make Cookies too. Oh Fiori yeah. Will make it. Oh, and then we had the oh. Jovanina. La yeah. From Jovanina, Jovanina used to make yes, those. All and these, and these oh, Italian. Those had wine in them. They they did. They did they have do. wine in there. Yeah. A little honey on them. A little red wine. And then of course there's also the store bought goods like the panettone and the taroni. And sometimes there's even like a C's candies oh, out there. My. There's so much food you yes. can't even. Believe. Yes. Okay, so we could talk about the food forever, but we should probably get to the wines. Yeah, true. We should probably get to the wines because there's a lot of wine there. And like we've said, a billion and a half times in Italian families, wine is the fifth food group. Right. So you have to have wine and food mm-hmm. or food and wine. They mm-hmm. go together like uh, peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. As we mentioned earlier about these wines, they're they're all relatively easy to find. And I know that because I bought them all on wine.com mm-hmm. and all of them are under $20. In fact, none of them is more than $17 or wow. $17.99, I should say. And all of them had decent ratings from at least one well-known professional rater. So that's nice. good. Mm-hmm. And then all of these wines are, of course, Italian wines mm-hmm. uh, because we're talking about fish. All of the wines are Italian wines. White wines. So you can have red wines. You could do a Pinot Noir, a Beaujolais, or something like that, or Mm -hmm. Gamay. But we're going to do white wines because that's a little bit more traditional to have with fish. And we wanted to choose something a little bit different. So there's no Pinot Grigio. And there's no Prosecco, although those are great choices. Like, you want to serve those, great. We're not saying don't serve them. We just want to do something. And oftentimes, that's what we will have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. They're very common, but they're good. Like, I would totally drink those any day of the week. And we also didn't choose a Gavi or a Suave because we've recently done some episodes on those. So I wanted to choose some things, some wines that are a little bit different. And maybe we'll do full episodes on some of these wines later. Later. Laters, laters, I said. You know, laters, laters, laters. That's right. <laughs> Which is many laters later. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, the first one is called Vermentino. Nice. And Vermentino, the Vermentino we have is called Agriolas Costal Molino Vermentino, and it comes from the large island off the coast of Italy called Sardinia. Ah. Now, on the island of Sardinia, Carmela. Vermentino. The island of misfits. That's right. The <laughs> island of misfit Vermentino. Now, Vermentino is the most well-known white wine that's grown on Sardinia, mm-hmm. although it's found in other areas in the kind of area. So in the Languedoc region of France, it's there. It's also in, in places in Italy like Liguria, but there mm-hmm. it's called Pigato. Oh. It's also found in Piedmont where it's called Favorita. And it's in Tuscany where it's just called Vermentino. So I think the Italians are just trying to like weird us out, like by giving different names uh, for a bunch of things. Of course. Now, some people consider the Vermentino from Sardinia to be the best. And it's supposed to be like really nice and acidic, citrusy, good saline notes. So it should be a really nice fish wine. Hmm. But we're going to find out. Okay. Okay. Now, the next wine, when I told it to you, you were like, oh, wait a minute. Is this cheese? It sounds like a cheese. It doesn't look like a cheese. It might go with cheese. It might really go well with cheese, but it's called Pecorino. Hmm. So what do you think of when you think of Pecorino? Pecorino Romano. That's right. But it's not. It's a wine. It's a wine. Okay. Now, this one, this is going to take me a little while to say the name of this wine. Umani Ronchi Terre di Chiete Velodoro Pecorino. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Wait, Pecorino again? Oh, that's the first that's one. The second name. one, I mean. Yeah, yeah. the Pecorino. Jeez. Vermentino was the first one. So okay. Pecorino is a white wine grape that grows in many regions of Italy, but this specific wine comes from the Abruzzo area. And Abruzzo is basically a province that's directly east of Rome. So it's like middle mm. of the country. Mm-hmm. And Pecorino was a wine, basically, Carmela, that I found out that was almost stop being produced in any like meaningful quantities but in the mid 1990s they started making it again it started hmm. in fact some people are calling it Italy's hottest wine I don't wow. know who they are I don't know who these people my are my goodness hot, they hot, hot, yeah. hot, hot, hot <laughs> wine. so sometimes this wine and Vermentino they could be fermented or stored in oak but this one is uh, stainless steel it doesn't go through malolactic fermentation so I'm expecting a really nice snappy acidic wine Ooh. but we're going to find out should be good with food again acidic wines are, are good with food that's Right. sounds like a weird thing, but it, they're really good with food. Mm-hmm. And then it's been compared sometimes to Sauvignon Blanc. Nice. These and are then, right up my alley. Yeah. And then in our show notes, and again, if you go to this episode on our website, in our show notes, there's lots of links. We talk about why it's called Pecorino or why it may be called Pecorino. Just trust us. It has something to do with sheep. And there's a really cute sheep 
on the wine oh bottle. My. But we want to keep rolling here. The third wine we're trying today is called Zenato Lugana San Benedetto. Oh. And Lugana is a wine made from a grape called Trebbiano. And the winemaker, uh, which has a vineyard near Lake Garda, which we love, uh, calls this grape Trebbiano di Laguna. Now, mm. here's another weird thing. Okay. Depending on the source, and I even checked chat, chat GGP, GPT, and they were all over the place too. But there is a, also a grape called Trebbiano Toscano. Huh. And some people say it's the same, and some people say it's different. What? And there's also, sometimes it's called just Trebbiano in France. And then there's also a version of it called Uni Blanc. Mm. I don't know if all, I think they're all the same. I'm so not they sure. don't check? They don't do like a DNA test? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I can't. I, I'm going to ask uh, chat GPT later on okay. if they do a DNA test. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it's very confusing. I'm all freaked out by it. Trust. Well, wow, we're just going to say gonna it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to hmm. call it a Trebbiano and we're going to go with it and we're going to see how it works. Uh, by the way, this is a, a, a grape that is commonly used in balsamic vinegar for oh, all that's worth. Wow. This one also fermented in stainless steel tanks, so I'm ex- expecting some good acidity. Uh, Lake Garda, that's where it comes from. Beautiful area, so underrated. Beautiful. If you ever want to go to Italy and go to a place with maybe a few fewer American tourists, that's a great place mm-hmm. to go. Okay, so anyway, I think it's time for us to try these wines. What do you say? I'm, I'm in. Okay. I'm ready and willing. So we're going to try it. We're going to see if these are good fits with the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So give us just a second, and we will take a break and be right back with our first wine. Okay, we are back, and we are ready to try our first wine. And this wine, I mispronounced the first time. Oh, really? So I'm going to get it right this time. Okay. It's Argiolas. Costa Malino Vermentino. I got the name of the, the brand name wrong. So this is from... Italy, Sardinia. Uh, the Argiolas family is the producer. This is a 2021, and it was fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents at wine dot com. Mm-hmm. It's thirteen and a half percent alcohol, which is actually wow, quite high a bit. for yeah. a white wine. Hi, hi, hi. And it's one hundred percent Vermentino, as far as I know. And Wine Specter, spec. I always say that Wine Spectator, the Specter, the Specter, the Specter. No, Wine <laughs> Spectator gave it an eighty nine, which is a okay. good rating, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. what are you smelling? It smells really nice. It's really nice. Kind so I'm getting. Re- oh, go ahead. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, it smell. does. It has a little bit of like um, peach or something yeah. on it. I I'm mean, also thinking like a little tropical fruit, like mm-hmm. little pineapple. Ooh, yeah. It definitely has a sweet edge to it, don't you think? There's a little bit of a sweeter mm-hmm. like tone to it. Little little citrusy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you're right. There's a little maybe there's something peachy about peachy, it. To me. Yeah. I don't know. Peachy or nectarine. Pineapple-y. But. Okay. But that's, you know, those are both sort of mm-hmm. sweet. Sort of. Sort of. No, it's yeah. kind of like sweet, but with tang, too. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. both have a little sour patch kid on You're right. It, yeah. You know? There is some sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of perfume, too, or something. Mm-hmm. Like floral type? Yeah. Of? I don't know. Just, yeah. Just some sort of perfumey kind of smell to mm-hmm. it. Could be the you know alcohol. It's relatively high alcohol, so maybe True. that's kind of coming yeah. through. Okay, it's so very let's, nice. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's nice. Oh, it's kind of nice. it's kind of tart or something. At the end, am I right? Especially or sour. A little sour patch kid. Yeah. Kind of like those peach sour. candies. Yeah, actually, those you're right. peach sour mm-hmm. with a little bit of sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a little sweet and sour. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's yeah. very acidy. I like it a lot. Like I'm really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Like like I like it a lot. Like. Oh, that's nice. It is an um, interesting, little different. Like it does have this like tart or sour in this side. It's got a little bitterness on it, almost a little stone too. I can even, uh, you know, it's almost like you said though, a little bit of flower, like a little bit mm, of flower petal. Floral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little what bit kind of, of flower do you think though? Oh, I don't know. Let me think. It's not like a rose or anything, is it? No, mm-hmm. no, it's not a rose. I don't know. It's got yeah, it's, like, but it's kind of floral. Mm-hmm. They're definitely like a little bouquet of flowers. Bouquet, flower bouquet, mm-hmm. a bouquet. Okay, a what bouquet, f- bouquet. What food on the fee fee I can almost oh talk. My God, what is the wrong with of the us? seven fishes. What food would you eat with it? Oh, what I f- could, seafood would you okay. pair with it? I could have anything with this. Really, the any of those clams, baked clams, the baked clams mm-hmm. would be really nice because mm-hmm. the baked clams are special. They mm-hmm. have a, this is my auntie Anne's baked clams, mm-hmm. and they have a topping on them. <laughs> A topping mm-hmm. of breadcrumbs, lemon juice, and butter. Mm-hmm. And so I think this would, this would be go really, really well. Mm-hmm. Oh, it would be a really nice, it would mm-hmm. cut right through some of that mm-hmm. butter and saltiness mm-hmm. and just. 
I think so. Don't you think? I yeah. do. I think so. I also think it would go well with like the steamed clams and mussels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking maybe not, you know, the grilled shrimp has kind of a meaty flavor. I think it would go great. I think it would but go I, great. But I, I'm thinking more of like some more of the Well, those, and even like the yeah. crab, like the fresh See, crab. See, I don't eat crab. I don't I, eat crab. Yeah, crab yeah, freaks yeah. me out. It freaks me out. Oh my crab God, freaks me out. It's so it freaks good. me out. I Cracked won't eat it. crab. I won't then eat you it. Get, then you get that little end, like the oh, little of, no. the, of the leg. No. And you take that little part where it's pointy mm-hmm. and then you use it. And my Aunt Glow calls it the tool. Everybody needs their tool. To and take out some of the crab. Yeah, it's so It grosses me out. It freaks me out. Why? It looks like, like a crab spider. Cakes? No, I like crab cakes. I just, it looks like a spider. It kind of freaks oh, me out. My, the cra- spider uh, of the sea. Uh, it made me oh, sick. Oh, uh, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. okay, so what else would you eat with this? Like, aside from the, the fish or feast, this is definitely fishes. a fish. This is definitely a fish wine. Like, I don't think. It's giving you a fish vibe. Yeah, like lasagna, pasta. It's not going to go. I don't with. think so no. either. Not like, like a, a red no, sauce? No, no. No. Like, I think it would be. Meat, that, no. The, the acidity from like a tomato sauce, but mm-hmm, this would mm-mm, not work. Mm-mm. Like you definitely want to have like probably people who like oysters mm-hmm. would love this wine yeah. with it. I bet. I think you're right. I don't like oysters either. I don't they kind of freak me it's out. The only one I it don't is eat. Funny because you will eat seafood like crazy, oh, yeah. ah, but you will not eat the <laughs> I oysters. I just get crazy. No, I yeah, yeah. oysters. I but me, I, I'm that's liking. when I fall back. Okay, I'll just yeah, you fall back. You guys <laughs> go ahead and eat. I'm falling back. Um, <laughs> I will say this is a nice wine. It's different. Like it's a little different. It's got it a little bit more body. It's yes. got a little bit more Fuller, to it like a than than some like a Pinot Grigio. I like it. It's a really nice wine. It's a nice drinking wine. Like I could see this, you know, you're before dinner or whatever, you're kind of hanging out on a, you know, Christmas or uh, whatever holiday you celebrate and you're just kind of drinking it. I yes. think it's a nice drinking mm-hmm. wine. It does go have well a with, little bit of bitterness, which is mm-hmm. kind of interesting. It is. Yeah. It would go well with like cheeses and that kind of stuff too. It's, it's really nice wine. It feels like an old world wine. Ooh, you're... I don't know why. And how do you know what old world wine is? Because when I lived in the old world... No, but do you know what I mean? It just reminds me of it, yeah. I don't uh, know no. what I mean. Actually, I don't know I what don't you know mean. I don't know what I mean. But it I'm just, with you. It just kind of has a traditional taste to it. Okay. I will take that. Okay. For what it's worth. Okay. All right. Let's rate this wine. So a little reminder on our rating scale. We rate on a scale of 1 to 10, where 7 and above means that, hey, we're going to buy this wine, and 4 below means, hey, we're not going to buy this wine, we're not going to like it. And I was listening to our last episode, and I screwed up about 5 and 6. I said like 4 and 6 or something. But if it's a 5 or a 6, we'll drink it. Mm-hmm. But we may look. we may look for something else. And we're not going to buy it. Right. But we it's not terrible. might try and hand it off to somebody. Yeah, but, but it's not but terrible. If nobody wants it, we we'll will drink it. We'll keep drinking it. We'll I, keep drinking right. it. Right. So what would you give this wine? Okay. So it's so hard because I, I white wines are my speciality, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's difficult because I just love so many. Okay. I'm going to give this right And by now. the way, no halvesies. You have to have I a whole know, number. Whole I number. I think I'm going to... Oh. I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. But I, I'm i really tempted to give it an eight. Okay. But I'm going to give it a seven for now. I'm going to give it an eight, and I'll tell you why. Wow. Uh, it's really interesting to me because, interesting, I use interesting a word. I, I say like it's and interesting a lot. It's not like a good thing. It's not, but in this case it youngest. is. So here's what I would say is it reminds me a little bit of a Sauvignon Blanc. It's got some of those kind of flavors to it, but it's got more body. Like it's got like mm. a good Sauvignon Blanc will have that, but it, this is a little richer. I think yes. it's a richer wine. So I really like it. And I think it could be a good like alternative. And actually, yes, I would say for you, I can see why you would like this even more than like a typical Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, because it's not as like, sometimes those like Pinot Grigios and Sauvignon Blanc can almost be fly away. Like mm. they're almost like not, they're, they're so light and I love them, but right. they're almost so light. Like this one's got good girth, like good with fried foods, good with fish and chips, good with right. that Right, it can stand up. Totally. You good stand wine. Up to it. Good yeah, wine. it's a great good wine. wine. See, and that's why I'm going to see how I feel about these other ones. And I know, I'm super curious about these other two because yeah. I don't think we've had... I don't recall having any of these before, like these style, uh, sorry, these varietals before. Mm. So I'm super excited about yes. this. Yes. Okay. We're going to take a break and we are going to try our next wine. Perfect. Okay. We are back and we're ready to try our next wine. And, and while I'm talking about it, Carmela, you can smell it. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, thanks. You're welcome. This, is, this one's got a real cute little label oh, on it. It's got so a little cute. sheep on it. Oh. Super cutie cute. Okay. So cute. This one is the long name, Umani Uronki. 
Tere de Chiete Velodoro Pecorino. So again, this is from Italy. It's the Abruzzo region of Italy. The producer is Umani Oronchi. This is a 2021. The price was $16.99. Wow. On wine.com. This is only 12.5% alcohol, so a little bit less than the last one. The, uh, the grape is Pecorino. And the ratings, professional ratings, James Suckling, which is a big surprise, gave it a 92. And the tasting panel gave it a 91. Hmm. So, Carmela, what are you smelling in this Pecorino? And it's not a cheese, ladies and gentlemen. And it does smell cheesy, thank mm-mm, God. Mm-mm. Uh, it, you know, it's it's less Pretty fruity. Light. Yeah, Pretty I was going to say, it's very th- almost kind of thin smelling. Yeah, doesn't mm-hmm. have it's almost hard to get a lot a out lot of, of it. Smell. Maybe a little of apple. Little apple, I yeah. think yeah, apple, yeah. But but it's pretty. Yeah, you're right. It's it's thin, light. It's hard to get. I'm almost getting huh. a little bit. You know, sometimes those. I've we mentioned this before. Like the Rieslings and Alsace have a little gas smell to them. It's almost got a little gasoline, maybe. Maybe, but pretty mild, pretty subtle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not getting I don't know. much. I'm, I'm not, not getting much not, of a smell. It smells, and I think this is just typical of like smelling something cold. <laughs> But it has that fresh smell. It does. To it, apple. Know? I'm getting a little apple. I think that's mostly it. I think we're gonna have to go in and taste yeah. it because we're not gonna. We're gonna be like it's. Gonna, we're gonna have to put it up our Start, nose. Like, okay, here we hyperventilating. Go. <laughs> hmm. It's just super light. It's got it's a little really bitterness. Light. It's got a little bitterness to it. It's like a wine spritz. It does have a, almost a little bit of isn't that what effervescence. It's, yeah, isn't to it, it? Don't they call a wine spritz sort of a watered down? Or am I totally no, off? No. What's a wine spritz? Well, like a, a spritz is just, it's got like wine and some like, well, the like the Campari and a little oh, bit of... Oh, no, no, but I think there's something else. I got to look it up. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to take this out. I don't, I, don't, know. I don't know what she's talking about, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. I don't know. I don't know. Jeez, it's a spritz. We've had a spritz a million times. Wine, but she's saying, I don't know spritz. what a spritz is, but she's grandma, had a spritz. Hey, I, I have a spritz, a spritz that I like. You're a talking spritzer. about a spritzer. What's a spritzer? I don't know, <laughs> but I think that's what spritzel. it is. Okay. No, Will that's just a tell German me? thing. No, oh, God. <laughs> Spackle. No, what is uh, it called? A spritzel? Oh my God! Can we stop? Can we just stop and talk about the wine? But wait, is there a German oh, like pretzel shit. or something called a spritzel? I don't know. Would somebody out in listening land just call <laughs> us and let us know because we don't know what I'm the hell? All turned upside down. I don't know down what now. is going on I'm right so now. Sorry, I'm totally lost. But I'm, a spritzy. Wait, <laughs> wait, what did you call it? A spritzer. What's Not a spritzer? A spritz- oh my God! Okay, hold on. All right, we are back. And okay. I'm answering oh, a wine I spritzer is a light cocktail in which wine is mixed with club soda and served it's over ice. It's a spritzer. It's, yeah. It tastes like or a spritzel. Hey. From, <laughs> it's a spritzel. Oh, God, a pretzel. What? No, okay, spritz- fine. I get it. Uh, it's a super. Oh, uh, I don't even know what we're talking about no, anymore. Wait, wait, I, we've wait lost a minute. It. We've lost it. We talked about a spritz. I brought it up. I didn't mean a spritz because I like a spritz with Aperol, not Campari. But I know people like Campari. You guys shoot yourself anyway, no, but the spritzer <laughs> is a thing. And this tastes like a spritzer. I've never had a spritzer, but I think that it's kind of. She thinks it tastes like a spritzer, although she's never had a spritzer. Okay, but it's, okay. it's light. Fine. This is really light. It's very it's light. It's super light. I mean, it's almost like this is fly away. And it, mm-hmm. it almost, it doesn't have a lot of taste to it. Mm. What was the alcohol in it? Twelve and a half percent. Okay, so it's not like super light. No, but it's it, it's got a little lemon. It's got some lemon. A little bit of citrus. It's got a little yeah. pith on it. A little mm. bitterness, a little pith, maybe a little stone, but super light. Not a lot of apple on the taste. No, it's no. lemony. It's, it's very, very lemony. Light. And it it's is very, lemony, yeah. If you kind of put it in your mouth a little bit more, like kind of swish it around your mouth a little. I'm being serious. Okay. You'll taste much more it's, lemon. It's Yeah, it's like lemon water. It it is like a lemon water. I agree, and so uh, you, you get that now, mm-hmm. like kind of you get lemony. It's like a lemon water, super mm. super citrusy. So what what food? So citrusy. Yeah, what food would you have with this? You could almost pour this on your oysters. <sighs> you could do that. It could be delicious. You could probably cook with this wine. Okay, sorry. Uh, you know what? You could probably have this with a lot of things. Okay, go ahead. I could have this with the shrimp easily. I could have this with the clams. Mm-hmm. I could have this with any of those dishes. Okay, I any of the seafood there. dishes. I could have it anywhere. Any of the seafood dishes, but not with pasta. Again, not no, with pasta. No, But this one, compared to the first one, so the Vermentino had some body to it. Mm-hmm. This has almost no body. I mean, it's no. super light. Right. Super citrusy. It does taste like... Lemon water. It's nice. I mean, look, I'm not bagging oh, on it. Oh, no. It's nice. But if you're looking to impress, you're not going to bring this bottle necessarily no. somewhere. Yeah. And we may not even really serve it. Oh, I would serve it. But, I, you know, it's not, again, it's not, like, the bottle's cute. 
It's not going to offend anybody. It's just, you know, I'm I'm like, eh, it's Maybe okay. Maybe after it's exercise, okay. this might be. Oh, this would be good. Come <laughs> off the treadmill, a little sweaty. Just pound this. It's got really? a little Gatorade on it. Yeah, it's got a little Gatorade does. going. It's yeah, kind of I'm just like you. a nice citrusy glass of water. Yeah. Yeah, Gatorade gum. Gatorade gum. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay, what rating are you going to give this wine a Carmela? Okay, so this is the deal. I like it. I don't have a problem with it at all. But I'm probably not going to be like, I'm I'm not going to order this glass of wine. I'll probably get it a six. I am too. Okay. I mean, I might order it, but I'm, but it would have but to be for, for a very, yeah, no, I don't know, <laughs> no. but it have to be for a very specific reason, you know, like I want something super light, summer day, mm-hmm. I'm out in the sun, whatever, but it's not, you know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's not bad. I'm not, no. like, we're not bagging on it. It's not <laughs> like I'm throwing it down the sink. I actually like it. I will drink it. I'm just, it's, it's not, it's not knocking me out. No. So there you go. Unless okay. you have the whole bottle. That, well, that might knock you out. It, yeah. I will tell you, this is one of those wines that you would call dangerous. Yes, true. Because it's you could just down this thing. Drinking. You could be like, whoa, it tastes like lemon water. And four drinks in, you're like... Ay, ay, oh, ay, wow. Ay, I would be... Ay. 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 That would not be good. Okay. Maybe you put it on a corset. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> no. Let's, we're going to take a... People don't know about that. Well, they do. If they listen to the last episode. Oh, okay. Put it on, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I don't have a corset. I'm uh, sorry. No, not yet. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Okay, <laughs> let's take a break and we're going to try our last wine. Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our last wine. And I will say, in a little bit of a disappointment, all of the wines had corks in them. Yeah, true. We like a nice screw cap. Jeez. You know, it makes it so much easier when you bring it over to somebody's house and then you can just crack oh, it open or on the drive over. Oh, anyway, no, wait, no, you'd never do that. Wait. Okay, this next wine is a Zanato Lugana San Benedetto. It's from Italy, from the Veneto region, which is a fancy way of saying the Venice region. The producer is Zanato, which is part of the Winebow wine brands. This is also a 2021. This is our most expensive. It was $17.99. We got hmm. it at wine.com. The alcohol content is 13.5%, wow. uh, which is the same as the first one. Yeah, these are high alcohol wines. Mm-hmm. For white wines, yeah. Uh, and again, this is the Trebbiano. Uh, but they call it Trebbiano Lugana or Uni Blanc. I don't know. I think that's what I, we'll see. And the professional rating, it's also, again, James Azakalinga. Oh, and boy. he gave it another 92, which is like what he gives everything. But right. what are you smelling on this wine, Carmelita? Okay, so it's definitely richer mm-hmm. than the second one. Mm-hmm. Similar to the first, um, I get, I'm kind of getting a little bit of pineapple on this one. A little a bit. tropical one on see, this. See, I'm getting sweetness. I'm getting like sweetness on this, like a cotton candy Oh. Kind oh. of sweetness. I feel like, um, hmm, cotton candy, huh? Yeah, I'm, and a little vanilla. I know this one did not, was stainless steel, but it's got a little vanilla smell to it. It's got a little, like, candy smell to it. I'm getting a little bit of fruit, a little bit of maybe, I don't know, pear or something, like a sweet pear. Hmm, okay, yeah. What are you I getting? Can, I can, the, the pear I can get behind. For sure. I'm still kind of getting a little bit of tropical hmm. on it. Like maybe a little mango-y bit. Mango-y or maybe, guava. Yeah. I don't yeah, yeah. know. Something. Uh, maybe just have a little hint of citrus on it. Like just a, like a yeah. little it's lemon hint. It's definitely rounder yeah. smelling. It does. That's why I was wondering like if, if it was oaked. And it's not. It's stainless steel. Mm-hmm. But it does have a rich, almost like a creaminess to it. Yes. Almost almost like maybe that's the vanilla that you're getting too. You yeah. know, it can kind of mm-hmm. have a little bit of that. Marshmallowy maybe. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, mm. let's try it and see what we think. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh, it's tart. Lemony. It does have some... What Ooh. fruit is that? It does have fruit on it. Like a nice fruit. Ooh, that's very nice. Little tropical fruit. I do. I feel like it's like papaya. Papaya. Like, it feels very like island. It does. It's not pineapple-y, though, to me. No, it's different. I think you're right. It had a little hint. It's like, a richer smell. fruit. Yeah, it is definitely... And a more like butterier. Like if you get a mm-hmm. really ripe... Like mango or papaya. Oh, it's nice. You almost have a creaminess. It does have a creaminess. Yeah. It has a little Mm -hmm. body to this Mm -hmm. one. It's got a nice bitterness on the end. A little stone. But it's nice. It does have the nice mouth feel. Mm Kind of reminds me of the first one. It's a little bit different flavor profile than the first one. But it's got nice roundness to it. It's got a little bit of body on it. Less bitter maybe than the first one. I don't know. I think it's got some bitterness on it. Yeah, a little bit. But I feel like the first one was a a little more citrus or tang or something. Yeah. You know, like when you really get a lot of it, you know, in that swish around your mouth. But this is full. And mm-hmm. pretty delicious. I'm liking it. What um, What would you have? I'm going to ask oh, you first this time. I think it would go with any of them. And mm. in fact, this one has a nice firmness to it that I almost feel like 
salad, like the second, like the the buffet course. Oh, you could do it. I think so. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. fact, I think it could stand up because of the body. It's got good acidity, but I think because of the body, it could actually stand up to like a lasagna or a melanzana, like a parmigiana oh, or something. Oh, I think you're right. You know, a little Much cheese. More, actually, you know, a little cheese with it. And that's the difference, I think, between the first one and this one. This yeah. one actually, I think, could stand up to I some of those could. sauces that you wouldn't normally maybe have with this type of wine. I really think it could. It's mm-hmm. nice. It's got good body to it. It's got. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. Mm. Uh, so it's got a little more. This to me is more like this could be your all night drinking wine. It's got it's it's good. It's good. Is that better? I didn't scream. Yeah, no, that was way better because then I have to like figure out. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. this is really nice. Mm -hmm. They're all very pretty too. mm -hmm. I mean, in the glass, yeah. The bottles, the one we liked the least from the taste profile, like the sheep, the pecorino, Mm -hmm. had the cutest bottle. Yeah, because it had a little sheep on it. Yeah, the first one and the last are kind of boring. This one's sort of a classic bottle. Classy. Yeah, it's nice for yeah for a Christmas Eve, just you know, or whatever, or holiday. Just no, this is a good bottle of wine. This is a nice bottle of wine. Really to bring nice. to somebody's house like really this nice. is a good wine mm-hmm. what uh, rating uh would you mm. give this wine well i'm definitely an eight definitely i mean gosh oh, really an eight yeah i'm gonna give it an eight for sure what are you gonna do i am torn between a seven and an eight i really like it i kind of liked the first one better oh, okay um but I, it's a real i'm gonna give it an eight it's a really nice wine i'd like to it's almost really try nice them wine. side by side just because do it. we're gonna do it all night Woo! We're gonna show, Woo! We're now it. taste that one Woo! Yeah. now taste that one because Yow! there's now taste that one yeah now taste that one yeah and I want to hear more about like what the, these people, what people say about it, because I'm curious okay. how similar or different they are. Well, so wait, let's what did you that. say you were giving it? I'm giving it an eight as well. I'm, okay. I'm giving it an eight. So, okay. Which one? Let's do a couple of things. Which one of these are you finishing tonight? Wow. That's tough. I think I'm going to get, I'm going to have this one. Okay. I think I'm going to do the Vermentino. Okay. Oh, okay. So we, we're good. And then which do you think is the right wine for the Feast of the Seven Fishes? Well, definitely the first or the third. Yeah, I think either of them are great. I do you, think that this one is probably more of the all night like exactly. Wine. This you if you're just buying night. one mm-hmm. white wine, probably this one. This one will probably do the trick for the whole night. But I think I like the Vermentino a little better. Okay, but that's okay. 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 okay, so let's do the taste profile, profile expected <laughs> from these different wines. So a Vermentino, the wine folly says lime, grapefruit, green apple, almond, daffodil. Oh, yeah, okay. we were getting well, that. You're getting that flower. perfume, mm-hmm. yeah. Then also sometimes saline, pineapple, apricots, ah. apricots. You mm-hmm. said pe- oh peaches, well, you, peaches in there. Oh, good. Orange blossom and mineral. Hey. And the wine spectator said of this wine, poached apricot, raspberry, wild thyme, and orange curds. Okay. Offers citrus zest and sea salt notes. Mm, the sea salt. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Pecorino wine paradigm said aromas of acacia, jasmine, lemon blossom, yellow fruit, and nuts. Followed by flavors of apricot, peach, pear, lemon with a mineral edge and sometimes a slightly sp- spicy finish. I didn't get wow, any of we that. we didn't get any of now, that. Now, uh, another one said lemon, honey, candied citrus. I think oh. that's closer to what we yes, had. Yes, I would think so. That's interesting. Ours, I just, yeah, it was more of a thinner mm-hmm. taste profile mm-hmm. on that. Hmm. Okay, so Wine Folly says of Trebbiano Laguna. Uh, white peach, lemon, green apple, seashell, basil. Actually, that's just Trebbiano huh. in, J- in general. James Suckling said of this wine, pure mineral incisive nose with limey, chalky character, green apple and citrus aromas. Palette is more subtle, medium to full-bodied frame. I agree, agree with that with generous citrus fruit and zesty finish. I kind of agree with this. The winery says peaches, citrus, bananas. Oh. Bananas is interesting. Mm -hmm. And herbs, Mm -hmm. which are underscored by crisp acidity and supple body. I do think, you know, like, I don't know about supple. That sounds a little sexy. Wow. But it did have body to it. You mean like a corset? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) If this wine had a lingerie, it would be a corset. (laughs) That's what it would wear. Okay. um, I don't know what to say, but we did okay on the taste profile. We did okay. We did okay. I mean, we were... The first one, I think we nailed more. I think so. I would Mm -hmm. say that one. And then the second one was just so... We just weren't getting a lot... We weren't getting much of anything. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. a little trickier, but yeah, yeah, we did okay. Yeah, I like it. So first of all, yes. ladies and gentlemen, uh, Feast of the Seven Fishes. If you Start don't do your it, tradition do it. Now. Do, it. do it. Become Italian. Say you're Italian American. Right, right. Make it up. Even it's fine. Not. Just do it's it. Do You'll it. enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. We we'll allow it. It's not a sacrifice. Especially if you contact us or give us a nice rating, we'll let you in. We'll right, let you in. Right. Come on. You'll down. get a test at Sunday night dinner, and then maybe it's Feast of the Seven Fishes. And, and then if you maybe bring, we'll adopt you. Adopt you. And then if you bring <laughs> wine, you're in. Like you're totally in. Right. Like, just and don't if you bring these wines. These wines. Fine. Not, yeah, all of them. I mean, even the Pecorino. We'll take you. True. Okay. 
So anyway, we would like to thank you very much for listening to us. We are the Wine Pair Podcast. And while you're thinking about it, again, subscribe and give us a nice rating and we'll invite you over. And we'd love to hear from you on any of these things. Do you celebrate the Feast of the Seven Fishes? What do you celebrate? If, if you don't celebrate it, what do you celebrate it? If you do celebrate it, what are your fish dishes? We want to know. Right. Um, do you like bacala? And bacala. do you, Have you ever had it? tomato sauce with everything? Yeah, exactly. Because you're calabres like me. Okay. You can email us at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com and you can visit us on our website at thewinepairpodcast.com and you can email us and, and and you can reach out to us and you can leave us a voicemail and all sorts of stuff and you can follow us on Instagram and you can also follow us on Counter Social and you can DM us and we hope you tell your friends and your family and the people who are Italian or want to be Italian or Italian adjacent or whatever it is. Wow. We just want you to tell people about us. Just tell people. Tell people and we would love it and love you and we'll drink wine with you. Okay. Ooh. Well, thank you for listening to The Wine Pair Podcast and we'll see you next time or listen to you or see you or what I don't know. I, I don't oh know my God. Don't make it confusing. I know. I'm already confused. And as we like to say, life is short, so stop drinking shitty wine. Can you say that in Italian? Uh, life is... Uh, vito è e piccolo. I don't know how to say it. Okay, piccolo. next time. Uh, piccolo. Small. Small. I don't know. Oh, life is small. Yeah. Small. <laughs> short. Pa, yeah. Pa, pa, uh, pa. Merde. No, that's French for shitty. Okay, <laughs> stop drinking the shitty wine. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Buon Natale. <laughs> I hung up